This deep dive was researched entirely by the new AI model, ChatGPT Deep Research, and is fully AI generated. Today, we're tackling a really interesting, maybe even a controversial question. Is the knowledge we humans have actually holding back AI? It's a fascinating angle, isn't it? That we're digging into this essay, Beyond Human Heuristics, how self-taught AI outperforms expert-guided models. Hmm. And yeah, the core argument is pretty bold. Which is? Essentially that AI systems can sometimes hit peak performance, really excel, when they learn with minimal or even zero human guidance. They can actually outperform models that we've carefully preloaded with you know, our expert knowledge. Okay, so our understanding, our rules of thumb, the essay calls them heuristics, right? Exactly, heuristics. By feeding those into AI, along with our, well, our biases, we might actually be putting a ceiling on what these systems can do. That's the provocative idea. And the essay lines up some pretty compelling examples to back this up, looking across different areas. Like what sort of areas? Well, it starts with games, which is often where these things show up first. But then it moves into language. Uh, computer Ooh. vision, even robotics and design. Okay, let's start with the games then. Where does the essay kick things off? A really key example they dive into is AlphaZero, the chess AI. Ah, right. The one that learned chess incredibly fast. Incredibly fast. We're talking hours. Yeah. And it started um, with basically just the rules, nothing else. No opening books, no human strategies. Just the rules of how pieces move. Yep. And from that, by playing against itself over and over, millions of games, it didn't just learn chess, it mastered it, went on to beat Stockfish. And Stockfish at that time was the world champion engine, wasn't it? Packed with decades of human chess knowledge. Precisely, decades. All the accumulated wisdom, pawn structures, piece values, strategic positioning, you name it. It was all baked into Stockfish and engines like Deep Blue before it. So those older engines were strong because of human knowledge. They were, definitely formidable. But the essay argues that those very human heuristics, while powerful, also uh, constrained them, limited their style, maybe their foresight. Okay, so AlphaZero learns differently. How did that work again? Pure self-play. Millions and millions of games. Mm -hmm. It just adjusted its neural network based on whether it won or lost. Started blank, learned everything from experience. And the way it played was different. Radically different sometimes. The essay highlights these moves AlphaZero made that looked, well, frankly, bizarre to human grandmasters and traditional engines. Like that knight sacrifice you mentioned earlier, giving up material for some long-term positional thing. Exactly. That's a classic example. Standard chess heuristics scream, don't do that, you know, protect your material. But AlphaZero saw a deeper winning advantage that wasn't obvious through that traditional lens. What did the human experts make of its style? They were kind of blown away. The essay quotes a grandmaster describing it as insane attacking chess with profound positional understanding. It was like it found a whole new way to play. Wow. And it wasn't just chess, right? The essay mentions Go as well. Oh, yeah. It gets even more striking with AlphaGo Zero. The original AlphaGo did use some human game data. Right. It learned from pro games initially. But AlphaGo Zero, it went full purist, learned only from self-play. Absolutely zero human games, zero human openings to start with. And the result? It crushed the version of AlphaGo that it learned from humans. The score mentioned in the essay is uh, 100 games to zero. 100 to zero. Okay, that's a statement. It really is. It basically reinvented huge chunks of Go strategy, discarded or refined standard openings that Joseki that were centuries old, came up with totally new tactics. So the essay uses these game examples to say what, fundamentally? That our human heuristics, our best practices are great up to a point. But at the superhuman level AI can reach, those same heuristics can become blinders. They create limitations that self-taught AI, without those preconceptions, can just blow past. Okay, games are kind of clean, controlled environments. Does the essay argue this applies elsewhere too? It does. It brings up TD Gammon and Backgammon way back in the 90s. Another case of self-play discovering strategies, opening moves, risk levels that surprise the human pros. And more recently, video games. Yep. OpenAI 5 and Dota 2 is a big one. Learn from scratch, beat the world champs. And again, it used these uh, unorthodox tactics. How so? Well, the essay notes it made super aggressive plays, showed incredible team coordination, stuff human teams might shy away from because it seems too risky according to you know, established strategy. And didn't have that ingrained caution, maybe. Potentially. 
And then there's Alpha Star in StarCraft, another complex strategy game. Achieved Grandmaster level, again through self-play. Mm -hmm. Developed really robust strategies. Executed complex maneuvers better than top humans without relying on hard-coded human tactics. So the common thread seems to be letting the AI figure it out itself often leads to finding non-obvious, sometimes superior solutions. That's the pattern the essay highlights in games, yeah. Yeah. That human knowledge, while a great launch pad, might impose a kind of performance ceiling that self-learning can break through. Okay, that's compelling for games. What about something less structured, like, say, language? Right, the essay shifts gears there. It contrasts the old way of doing AI language processing machine translation, chatbots like uh, Watson, even with the modern deep learning approach. I remember those early systems. Lots of handcrafted rules, dictionaries, grammar templates. Exactly. Very reliant on explicit human knowledge engineering. Watson winning Jeopardy was amazing, but it was built on this massive, carefully curated knowledge base and rule set. So very structured. How did that change? The big shift came with Neural Machine Translation, NMT. Google's system around 2016 is a key example the essay uses. It learned just from massive amounts of parallel text, English to French sentences, for instance. Without being fed the grammar rules explicitly. Precisely. It just learned the patterns. And the improvement in translation quality was apparently dramatic. The essay quotes someone saying it was like an entire decade of research progress almost overnight. Wow, because it wasn't limited by the rules we thought governed language. That seems to be the idea. These neural nets could capture nuances, sarcasm, idioms, context that are incredibly hard to write down as formal rules. They learn from the messiness of real language data. And that leads into things like GPT. Yeah, large language models like the GPT series. They learn by predicting the next word on just enormous data sets. They absorb knowledge implicitly without explicit programming of facts or rules. And they're much more fluent, more general purpose than something like Watson. Right. They can handle questions, writing, coding, tasks far beyond the specific domain Watson was built for. The essay argues this data-driven learning avoids the biases inherent in our human assumptions about language and lets the AI find connections, even word-meaning relationships, that linguists hadn't formally noted. So for language too, letting the AI learn from the raw reality seems to have unlocked more progress than trying to encode our understanding. That's the conclusion the essay draws for language. It suggests our explicit knowledge was, in a way, holding things back. Okay, games, language, what about vision, seeing the world? Similar story, according to the essay. It contrasts traditional computer vision, which used human-designed feature detectors. Things like edge detectors, corner detectors, SIFT and HOG, I think they were called. Exactly those. Features that humans decided were important for recognizing objects. That was the standard approach for a long time. Until? Until deep learning, specifically convolutional neural networks, or CNNs. The pivotal moment the essay points to is AlexNet winning the ImageNet competition in 2012. What was different about AlexNet? It learned the important visual features automatically from the raw pixel data. It wasn't told to look for edges or corners specifically. It figured out what patterns were useful by looking at millions of labeled images. And its error rate was significantly lower than competitors using those hand-engineered features. So why did the learned approach work so much better? Well, the essay argues the sheer complexity and variability of the real world makes it almost impossible for humans to guess all the right visual cues. There's just too much variation. Lighting, angle, occlusion. All of that. Deep learning models can statistically find subtle patterns across vast data sets that correlate with objects patterns we humans might miss entirely because of how our visual system is biased. And trying to combine lots of different handcrafted features was clumsy. It could be. Neural networks integrate everything through the learning process, resolving conflicts automatically. The essay even mentions an interesting point. Attempts to add human-inspired features back into deep learning vision models often don't help or can even make performance worse. Like the AI is saying, nope, got this covered, thanks. Pretty much. It reinforces the idea that trusting the data, letting the model learn its own representations, often beats imposing our prior notions about what visual features matter. So the pattern holds. Games, language, vision. Letting the AI learn from data seems to lead to better results than relying solely on our pre-existing knowledge. Does it go further? It does. The essay moves into robotics and engineering design, which is really fascinating. So well, traditionally, robots are programmed based on human analysis of movement, and designs are based on established engineering principles and intuition. But now, AI is learning or evolving 
better solutions. Evolving. Yeah, using techniques like reinforcement learning or evolutionary algorithms, the essay gives the example of Cassie, the bipedal robot. Right, the one that learned to run. Exactly. It learned through trial and error in simulation and then in the real world. And the resulting gait was apparently faster and more adaptable than manually scripted ones. Yeah. It found a more efficient way to move. And the Rubik's Cube solving hand. Another great example from OpenAI, it learned in simulation and developed these really non-intuitive strategies like using the table surface, specific ways of re-gripping the cube that were more effective than standard human-guided approaches. And there was that NASA antenna. Oh yeah, the evolved antenna. Yeah. Designed by an evolutionary algorithm, it came up with this weird asymmetric shape that looked nothing like a conventional antenna. But it worked better. Outperformed the human-designed one, according to the essay. It exploited subtle electromagnetic properties that maybe weren't obvious to human engineers, relying on standard design principles. So the AI found a solution in the design space that humans just hadn't considered. Precisely. The essay mentions other examples, too. Genetic algorithms finding weird but effective electronic circuits, algorithms improving wing shapes, even algorithms designing better neural network architectures than humans can devise. It's called automated machine learning, or auto ML. So the theme here is letting go of our preconceived ideas about form and strategy opens the door for AI to find truly novel, sometimes superior solutions. That's exactly it. If the AI is just optimizing for an objective like antenna performance or running speed, it's free to explore solutions that look strange to us because it doesn't have our aesthetic biases or our attachment to conventional forms. Okay, so the essay builds a pretty strong case with these examples. But why does human knowledge sometimes hinder AI? What are the underlying reasons? The essay digs into this from a few angles. First, there are sort of um, technical limitations. Injecting human knowledge is essentially adding a bias. If that bias isn't perfectly aligned with the optimal solution for a task, it can actually prevent the AI from finding it. Like the chess example, the bias towards keeping material might prevent finding a winning sacrifice. Exactly. The essay mentions that no free lunch theorem. Basically, any fixed strategy or bias will hurt performance on some problems. Human knowledge isn't universally optimal. Plus, our knowledge can be incomplete or just plain wrong. Right. We don't know everything. And if you build an AI on faulty or incomplete human knowledge, like maybe early speech recognition using limited phonetic dictionaries, the AI inherits those flaws. Makes sense. What else? There's the risk of overfitting to the human way of doing things. Think about self-driving cars. If they only learn by imitating human drivers, they might also learn our bad habits, our mistakes. Imitation caps performance at the human level. To get superhuman performance, the AI has to break free from just copying us. Hmm. And reward functions. That's another big one, especially in reinforcement learning. If we design the rewards based on our heuristics of what should lead to success, the AI might figure out how to game the reward system without actually achieving the real goal. Like that boat racing game example the essay might mention, right. where the AI just went in circles collecting bonus points instead of finishing the race? Precisely. It maximized the human designed reward, but failed at the implicit goal, winning the race. It exploited the heuristic we gave it. Okay, those are technical reasons. Does the essay go deeper, maybe more philosophically? It does. It touches on epistemological points, basically. Mm. How we know what we know. It argues that human knowledge is shaped by our specific evolutionary past, our culture, our history. It's inherently limited. So embedding our knowledge into AI risks, embedding our blind spots or limitations. That's the concern. Maybe AI learning from the ground up, from the raw data or environment, can uncover truths or patterns that we've completely missed because of our specific viewpoint. Kind of like how science progresses by questioning existing assumptions. Think Earth-centric universe. Challenging the status quo. Right. And there's the idea of tacit knowledge stuff we know but can't easily explain or write down. Early expert systems tried to capture explicit rules from doctors, for example, but struggled. AI learning from data might capture some of that ineffable tacit understanding. So it's not limited to what we can articulate. Potentially. Mm. And AI unconstrained by our assumptions might just come up with solutions that seem utterly nonsensical to us, but work. Like Alcego's famous Move 37. It allows for complexity we might shy away from because we humans often prefer simpler, more interpretable models, even if complex black box performs better. Interesting. Does it connect this to cognitive science at all? How our brains work? 
Yes, it does. It brings in ideas from cognitive science, suggesting our brains have evolved certain biases and shortcuts that make us efficient learners in our world, but aren't necessarily optimal in a purely computational sense. So transferring our ways of thinking to AI might transfer our inherent limitations. That's the argument. Things like our limited working memory and attention span, we process things step by step. Forcing AI into that mold might be inefficient compared to its ability to process vast amounts of data in parallel. And our cognitive biases. Confirmation bias, risk aversion. All those. Huh. The essay suggests that human guidance can inadvertently bake these biases into AI. If we're risk averse, we might guide the AI away from potentially high reward but risky strategies that it might otherwise discover. If we satisfy settle for good enough, we might prevent the AI from finding the truly optimal solution. What about functional fixedness, using things only for their intended purpose? Another great point the essay likely touches on. AI, lacking our preconceived notions about what a tool is for, might find novel ways to use things, like the evolved circuit using component properties in unexpected ways, or the Rubik's hand using the table. It doesn't get stuck in a rut thinking this is how it's supposed to be done. Exactly. And how we generalize might be different. We generalize based on our evolved experience. AI generalizes based purely on statistical patterns in data, which can sometimes lead to non-intuitive but effective solutions. Again, that ties back to our preference for simplicity and interpretability, which might conflict with achieving maximum performance via complex, opaque models. So wrapping this all up, what's the big takeaway from the essay? The core message seems to be that while human knowledge is incredibly valuable, especially as a starting point, we need to be aware that it can also act as a constraint. It can be a set of guardrails that uh, sometimes prevents AI from reaching its absolute full potential. And the examples AlphaZero, AlphaGo0, NMT, AlexNet, the evolved designs, they all seem to point towards the power of self-learning, of letting AI discover patterns and solutions without being overly constrained by our preconceptions. That's the consistent thread the essay weaves through those diverse fields. Self-taught or data-driven AI has repeatedly achieved breakthroughs by moving beyond human heuristics. It really leaves you thinking, doesn't it? If AI can surpass our best knowledge in games, language, vision, design, what other areas are out there? Where else could unguided AI learning lead to discoveries we can't even imagine right now? Exactly. How does this challenge our own understanding of intelligence, of creativity, of innovation, if the most powerful solutions sometimes come from processes that ignore our accumulated wisdom? Definitely food for thought. Thanks for walking through that essay, a really fascinating deep dive.